Hello and welcome back to the RP-1 series. Last time we finished off by landing a probe on the moon, a relatively major mission, and today we're going to start things off with the first launch of Gemini. Gemini will be a major stepping stone in our manned space program. The two-seater capsule was launched on top of the Alpha launch vehicle. This new version of the launch vehicle has hypergolic engines, which I believe we got to see in last video. Anyways, the Alpha launch vehicle pushes the Gemini capsule to near orbital velocities, but not quite. Luckily, unlike the previous capsule, the Gemini capsule has small hypergolic motors on board, so it's able to accelerate into the proper orbit. Now in orbit, the crew can begin collecting scientific data. Their mission will last substantially longer than any of the previous manned missions. This is simply due to the fact that they have more supplies and their spacecraft has more capability. After a few orbits of the Earth, it is decided to let Herbert Price outside to stretch his legs. This will be the first EVA to ever be performed. However, there is no EVA jetpack yet, or real way to maneuver, so he has to hold on tight and make sure not to let go. After orbiting the Earth for a few more orbits, their oxygen supply begins to run low because this spacecraft does not have the proper oxygen scrubber technology installed. It is unable to convert liquid oxygen into gaseous oxygen to be breathed, as this technology simply has not been developed yet. However, the next launch of Gemini will have it. Because of this, the crew prepares for re-entry. This capsule also has aerodynamic re-entry. That means that it produces lift throughout re-entry so that the crew sustains less g-forces. It worked like a charm on this mission, and the Gemini capsule ended up splashing down in the Pacific Ocean. Then in r and I'm gonna unlock the lunar rated capsules, and then I think I'll unlock, um... I'll probably have to unlock lunar rated heat shields to go along with those. And then I think I'll also unlock these early improved Hyperlox engines. I think these would be a major stepping stone for our engines program. However, I also want to get the 1965 orbital rocketry. So I also ended up grabbing that. And I also got some other improvements such as improved avionics as well as interplanetary science. And then we're back on the launch pad for another launch of the Beta launch vehicle. This is going to be a geostationary satellite. However, this rocket has a ridiculous TWR simply due to the fact that it has the higher power engines that I put on before to send that probe to the moon but without the extension, so it's super light for how powerful it is. This means that I was unable to do the gravity turn as quickly as I'd like without fear of the atmosphere simply destroying the rocket. So this wasn't exactly the most efficient launch profile. Stage separation happened without any problems, and the rocket eventually made its way to orbit. However, it did require a little bit of help from the Agena upper stage, which was really only designed to put the satellite into a geostationary transfer orbit. Speaking of the geostationary transfer orbit, it's going to place the satellite into that now. This is an orbit that will send our satellite out far enough away so that it can do the 
injection maneuver to place it into the proper geostationary orbit. This will be one final burn of the Agena. And with that, the mission was completed. And now we're back on the launch pad once again. This time, it's another lunar lander. And another super beta. This is a variant of the beta that is longer and taller and carries more fuel than previous versions. Anyways, our lunar lander was placed into the proper orbit and then sent out to the moon. On arrival, we slowed into the proper orbit before orbiting the moon before we could be above our landing site. This orbit is incredibly low and actually quite dangerous. That way, we don't have to fall as far when we're using the actual lander, reducing the delta V requirements. Once we got within a few kilometers of the ground, I fired up the Agena, which expelled all of its fuel, slowing us down, and then I could begin using the fuel on board the lander. The lander has small hypergolic engines that barely provide any thrust, but they're a lot better than they were last time. And would you look at that, a probe successfully landed on the moon in one piece. It's a bit better than I did last time. I then went and spent a bunch of upgrade points and selected another lunar landing contract. Then in the VAB, I switched out all the science on the next lunar lander for more advanced stuff. And now we're ready for another beta launch. One thing of note is that this is the first launch out of the Kennedy Space Center, as it is now December 1963, and the Space Center has recently been renamed after the late president. On its way to orbit, we encountered an engine failure. Luckily, the stage was able to limp its way to orbit, and the upper stage, Agena, was able to place us into the proper geostationary orbit, meaning this contract was successfully completed. Gemini 2 has many upgrades over the original. These upgrades are mainly in life support which will allow the capsule to sustain the crew for much longer. This means that we'll actually be able to complete one of the contracts that the last mission failed to do, simply because it didn't stay in orbit long enough. The rocket places the Gemini into an orbital trajectory without a hitch, and after a short circularization burn, the crew are in a stable orbit. For this contract, the crew first have to spend a few days in a lower orbit, which they did, before then boosting into a higher eccentricity orbit. This means that these two crew members will fly the fastest and the highest that anyone has ever gone. On this mission, Brittany Roberts will go EVA, and this time she sports a brand new jetpack. The EVA jetpack allows her to maneuver around without having to worry about not being able to get back to the capsule. After a quick photo opt, it's time to go back inside. And now the crew is ready for re-entry. They ditch the service module and then fire up the rockets. However, it is important to note that this mission was not able to complete all the science experiments on board, because apparently you need a scientist 
or an engineer to run some of the experiments. So after the mission, I quickly went and hired a scientist and then an engineer. These new astronauts will quickly be trained for Gemini. I then decided to upgrade research and development. And then it was time for the final launch of the video. This is yet another lunar lander. I'll spare you the boredom of this launch as we were placed into a nice orbit before then performing our translunar injection burn. Then our orbital insertion at the moon. And finally, it was time for a landing. I wasn't able to get to as close to the surface as I did last time. However, I'm adamant that the small engines on board the spacecraft will be able to slow it down for a lunar landing. And the Delta V on board was enough. And the Lunacido 4 lands on the surface of the moon. Back at the Space Center, I spent more upgrade points signed up for another contract, and then outfitted the next Lunar Lander probe with some of the newest science experiments that have yet to be used. <laughs> 